Welcome back, General. In previous videos, I went over the premier generals for the United States, Global Liberation Army, and People's Republic of China. For the last one, I omitted the PLA's highest ranking general, that being Tigress Ling. Two warriors meet on the battlefield. Who is to say who will win? I do, that's who. Me. You will fall, General. Unfortunately, there is hardly any information about the Tigress. What we do know is that she was a quadruple A class Dragon General stationed somewhere near the China Tibet border, at her stronghold known as the Tiger's Lair. What separates Ling from her compatriot generals was her incorporation of both USA and GLA units and buildings into her arsenal. While Ling knew the PLA had a capable arsenal, acquiring and incorporating some of the best qualities from the other factions' arsenals could only serve to benefit the People's Republic, as well as allow Ling to defeat any and all who dared to oppose her personally, making her the most formidable general at the time of the Zero Hour conflict. Your inferior forces will provide no challenge for my warriors. As China's top general, Ling's arsenal was largely made up of PLA structures. She could construct all Chinese buildings, with the exception of nuclear reactors and propaganda and internet centers. In place of the nuclear reactors, Ling used cold fusion reactors from the USA, as their destruction wouldn't leave behind a deadly cloud of radiation that could harm her troops. These reactors could be upgraded with control rods in order to generate additional power. Ling made use of the USA's Patriot missile system as an additional component of her defensive structures. Knowing that GLA's tunnel networks could quickly transport units and equipment underground, Ling made sure to include these tunnels as part of her defensive network. Her tunnel network even included the two RPG troopers to guard the entrances. Both the USA's particle beam cannon and GLA's Scud Storm supported the nuclear missile as superweapons in Ling's arsenal. These three structures also acted as technology centers for the general to acquire additional equipment and upgrades for her forces. The shadow of the dragon signals the beginning of your defeat, General. For infantry, Ling made use of tank hunters for anti-armor support. GLA RPG troopers from tunnel networks could also fulfill this role. Hackers were used to siphon additional funds from the internet, though she had to take extra care to protect them, as the lack of an internet center meant they had nowhere to take shelter. Instead of the Red Guard, Ling recruited USA Rangers as her standard infantrymen. These Rangers could capture neutral or enemy buildings and be armed with flashbang grenades from the barracks. American Pathfinders played a role in her infantry divisions, picking off enemies from afar while going unnoticed. Like the GLA commanders, Ling learned how to incite the local populace into an angry mob to send against her enemies. She even made sure these mobs could be armed with AK-47s from the Scud Storm. All three factions' famous commandos, Colonel Burton, Jarman Kell, and of course, Black Lotus, could be recruited to serve in Ling's army. With the exception of the GLA RPG troopers and angry mobs, all other infantry units could be equipped with chemical suits from the barracks. Your men are outnumbered, General. Do not try to make a greater horde than China. When it came to constructing buildings, Ling used the American dozer instead of the Chinese one. She did use the Chinese supply trucks for gathering supplies, though. For armored ground vehicles, Ling kept the Dragon tank as her primary anti-infantry vehicle. This included upgrading the tank with black napalm from the war factory. Gatling tanks were used as both anti-infantry and anti-air vehicles. These tanks, along with other Gatling weapon systems, could be upgraded with chain guns for increased damage output. Overlords acted as Ling's heavy tanks. They could be upgraded with either a bunker, a Gatling cannon, or a speaker tower. In addition, nuclear engines and uranium shells from the nuclear missile silo could be equipped onto the Overlords, increasing their speed and the damage they dealt to targets. You cannot build more tanks than China, General. Instead of Battle Masters, Ling used the USA's prototype Paladins as her main battle tank. These Paladins could be upgraded with composite armor from the Particle Beam Cannon, increasing their damage resistance. 
Since the Avenger was a superior anti-air support vehicle compared to the Gatling tank, Link made sure she had plenty available for use. Especially since they could destroy incoming enemy rockets with their point defense lasers. For scout vehicles, Link used the Sentry Drone, which could be upgraded with machine guns from the Particle Beam Cannon. The last of the American ground vehicles in her arsenal was the Tomahawk Launcher. But Ling didn't make much use of it as she opted for the GLA's Rocket Buggy, which could move faster and be upgraded with extra rocket pods from the Scud Storm. This allowed the buggy to launch a greater salvo of rockets at a target. The rockets could also be upgraded to be armor-piercing ones from the Scud Storm. These armor-piercing rockets would apply to the RPG troopers too. The last ground vehicle she used was the Combat Cycle, which was by default driven by a GLA terrorist. Only an RPG trooper could replace the terrorist on the cycle, equipping it with a rocket pod instead of explosives. Rage will only get you so far, General. Now rage in a column of tanks. That will get you somewhere. For aircraft, Ling still used the MiGs as her primary multi-role fighter. These fighters could be equipped with improved armor by ground crews from the airfield. Just like the Dragon Tank, its ordnance could be upgraded with Black Napalm, generating a more violent firestorm on the target location. The MiG wasn't the only multi-role fighter, as Ling could construct Raptors. Not just the standard F-22s either, but the King Raptors from General Granger's arsenal, which were superior to the F-22s. The Aurora was the fastest and most destructive of the light bombers in the US arsenal, which is why Ling made sure to utilize them for herself. Like other PLA generals, Ling made use of the Y-8 to drop cluster mines to slow down or halt an enemy ground force. The Y-8 would also be used to drop an electromagnetic pulse bomb onto an enemy base, shutting down all vehicles and structures in a wide radius for a short time. She used the H-6 bomber to conduct carpet bombing runs to level any buildings at an enemy base. Taking notes from the USA, Ling acquired the Spectre gunship to provide close air support, or CAS, for her ground forces. Unlike Generals Granger and Alexander though, Ling was only able to acquire the first rank of this support power. The Helix was the only helicopter Ling needed, as it was basically the Overlord of the Skies. It was quite durable for a helicopter, and could be equipped with either a bunker, Gatling cannon, or speaker tower. When armed with a napalm bomb, it could burn down enemy buildings. We will match your planes in the air, General. Your superiority will be only in your mind. Other upgrades or support powers that Ling used included subliminal messaging from the nuclear missile silo. This provided more effective propaganda to all her speaker towers. Some of her Chinese units could be instilled with nationalism, encouraging them to fight harder when together in a group. She could acquire neutron shells, but they were useless, as Ling had no nuke cannons in her arsenal. Like many other PLA generals, Ling could call in up to three levels of artillery barrage onto a designated target. The USA's advanced training could be researched at the particle beam cannon. Once attained, Ling's American units were capable of ranking up faster during engagements. GLA generals were well known for setting up cash bounties on their enemies, which provided much needed funds to wage war. Seeing the usefulness of such bounties, Ling could establish up to three levels of them for her own forces. The last, and one of the more potent of support powers that Ling used, was the sneak attack. High-ranking GLA generals made great use of this tactic to infiltrate an enemy base, and Ling would use it to do the same to any who dared oppose her. The dance of battle is strange and brief, and this battle with you has been strangely brief. <laughs> As mentioned earlier, Ling's stronghold was located somewhere in the snow-covered mountains along the China-Tibet border. Any general that wished to challenge her had to first defeat six or seven of the other prominent generals of the three factions. And even then, the opposition would be encouraged to leave the area, or experience the wrath of the Tigris. The might of China falls upon you. In the end, all fall before me. For this stronghold map, I'll be splitting it up into three quadrants, 
the lower, the middle, and the upper. On the west side of the lower quadrant is a small region of flat land and a supply dock for the opposing general to establish their base. This region also has two oil derricks next to a bridge that the general would need to capture to obtain additional funds. Further east across this bridge is another oil derrick. East of the derrick, among some trees, are four UN crates that can provide additional funds. North of those crates is a supply dock. Nearby is another oil derrick. Further north of that derrick is an artillery platform on a small hill. This platform overlooks three UN crates along a riverbank. Southwest of here, back towards the general's base, is a maintenance bay and an artillery platform that overlooks the bridge below, both of which are guarded by a couple of garrisoned bunkers. North of the maintenance bay and artillery platform is another artillery platform, an oil derrick, and a supply dock. East of the dock is a toxin bunker owned by Ling and guarded by some of her infantry. Further east of that bunker is yet another oil derrick. Capture all the oil you wish. You will not have time to reap the rewards. Just north of the opposing general's base is a town, which can be accessed by ground vehicles via a bridge to the east. Within this town is an oil derrick. North of that derrick, guarding another bridge, is an artillery platform. On the west side of the middle map quadrant is a hill with three tech buildings, a supply dock, and a secret lab controlled by Ling. The three tech buildings include two artillery platforms and a reinforcement pad. These structures are guarded by some of Ling's forces along with a tunnel network. Northwest of this hill are two oil derricks located at the bank of another river, down inside a canyon. Southwest of these derricks, back up the canyon, is a small lake with two nearby artillery platforms. Further west of these platforms is a supply dock and a nuclear bunker that is guarded and controlled by Ling. Just south of the bunker is an extension of the town, right next to another bridge. A large bridge separates the middle quadrant from the upper quadrant. The upper quadrant is the location of Ling's stronghold, which is so large that it takes up the entire upper portion of the map. The stronghold is layered with defensive turrets and tunnels. It has three command centers, one of each faction's superweapons, numerous reactors, and three barracks. It's also supported by a pair of war factories and airfields. The major point of attack against this stronghold is from the bridge. However, there is a secondary flanking route one could take instead. Going down into the canyon, a small force can cross the river near the bridge and move westward. This force could then make its way northward up a slope along the western flank of the stronghold, finally entering the stronghold right next to a supply dock. At the entrance of her stronghold is a row of bushes aligned in the Chinese characters for Tiger. Feel the stomping feet of my Ion Dragon! While Ling had three super weapons available to her, the timers for these weapons were tied to the Toxin Bunker, Secret Lab, and Nuclear Bunker, which were located just outside her stronghold. If one of these structures was destroyed, or alternatively, captured by an opposing general, the timers on all her super weapons would be reset. Additionally, one could target Ling's reactors to temporarily halt the timers. Delaying the launch of Ling's superweapons bought the general time to assault her stronghold, while preventing the loss of their own base. That is quite enough destruction, General. Now it is my turn. Direct attacks against the opposing general's base could be stopped, thanks to the bridge that acted as a choke point against assaulting ground forces. However, Ling's assaults would arrive in other forms, including airstrikes, artillery bombardments, and sneak attacks. Your defenses are <laughs> inadequate, General. While Ling made use of her Scud Storm, she would chastise the opposing general for constructing their own. The Scud Storm is a cowardly weapon, General. Ugh, I thought more of you. Seeing a general build their own nuclear missile or particle beam cannon wasn't too much of a concern for Ling. You are forcing me to answer with a nuclear silo of my own, General. That particle cannon is a formidable weapon, but it cannot stop China. In addition, Ling was unbothered by any commandos that the opposing general might recruit against her. 
Colonel Burton's exploits are legendary, but he is only one man, General. I see you have corrupted one of our Black Lotus agents. Her training will not turn the battle to your favor, General. Oh, the sniper Kel enters our battle. Do not count on his stealth to save you, General. Assaulting Ling's stronghold head-on would create a prolonged fight against formidable defensive structures and units. Even using the secret flanking route would only provide so much help. A general's best bet would be to make a multi-pronged assault of ground units, aircraft, superweapons, and support powers to ultimately defeat the Tigris. This has been an interesting contest. Perhaps you will challenge me again. With the defeat of Ling, the opposing general would prove to be the best of the three factions. <laughs>